Okay, so here we are starting with the second turn of the first sparks. And well, at this point, everybody's got their chance to buy new technologies. I'm not going to go through it in the detail I was before. Basically, we just have to kind of keep in mind what decisions there are and, and how you're making them. It's the, oh, if I put this up, will someone else buy it? And then I am given a new opportunity. Um, does someone else buying it, they have the free right to buy it. There's no bidding, there's nothing like that in it. So it's a slightly different feel from the Power Grid uh, base game one. And I, 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 I kind of like... Uh, I kind of like both, actually, but I kind of like that this is not bid. Um, you have more control. You can say, I know he wants that. I'm going to put that up. He's got to take it. That clears him out of the way, and it gives me a space, as opposed to the auction off. Well, as Green was the first player, sometimes, you know, their actions have the most sort of they generally will get the most chances to put cards up because they're putting something up that other people are interested in. They're trying to clear the way. They kind of failed here, but let's see what they did. First thing they did was they put this bow up, uh, and that bow was pleasing in the sen to, to anyone, really. Green would have liked it, I think, because they have a bear. So they were willing to buy it, no problem. Unfortunately, Black stepped in. Blue did not want it, because Blue has no bears right now. It would be kind of a wasted purchase for this turn, so the hell with it. They could, sitting in the last position, they have the option to wait on, and, and see. They'll probably get something better. But Black did want it, and they ended up purchasing it. This is their third tool, so they don't have to throw anything away yet. They've got a pretty good production setup. Next one was this field, a four-point field. Nice card, no question. Again, Green would gladly have bought it. But Yellow jumped up and said, Hey, I already got a field. That plow looks really tasty to me. <laughs> I, he can't take it this turn. One of Green's options might have been to grab the plow. Um, with no fields, I, you know, I should have thought about it more. Maybe it would have been worth taking just to deny it to someone else, but instead he put the fire up. Nobody wanted that, but the truth of the matter is baskets are of no use to green. Green has no uh, no fruit. Now, it could be of use in the long term, but you know, I think there's a limited number of fire cards, and what the hell. Uh, it could be useful because towards the end of the game you might be stockpiling lots more food. So let's get it out of the way. And that brings a card up, which is this 23-point spear, which is definitely tasty to blue. They, they're in the position to, to intercept that. Now, um, blue, though, has a problem. They don't have money. They only have one buck. They can't take anything. I kind of screwed up with them, I think. Um, I don't remember my thinking there, but they really are short and can't afford anything but this crappy basket, which helps them, but it's all they get, or a lousy t-shirt. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next player who's red, and we'll see what they do. And we finished up the purchasing with red putting the spear up. Only white could have afforded it, and white had better things that they desired. So that's a third tool for the red player. And what white found was this basket, which is awesome. It's got, they've got two things. No big advantage there because there's a pile of fruit here. But with eight or more fruit in the pile, they can collect four. Four fruit is worth eight bucks. There wasn't, or eight food or whatever. There wasn't anything that they're likely to do that well with. So the bow, they're a decent amount of bears, but they're already taking bears out of the pool. So, if they're taking two bears out already, um, if they end up taking four this turn, very quickly the bear population is going to get lower. It's still an attractive card because with this many players, a lot of bears are showing up. But they wanted to make sure 
that they have kind of a more balanced feeding. That's an important uh, uh, attribute in this. There's no real advantage. So in the original power grid, there's an advantage to kind of consolidating along one type of commodity because you can shift stuff between your factories that way. Well, here, it doesn't seem to be a real advantage to uh, being in only one commodity. Whoever, it, it, as long as people are hunting that, the same penalties are going to accrue, and there's no even small edge like there is in the original power grid to having more than one. one. It also makes your other commodities more valuable. Nobody's uh, getting fruit at this point. I think somebody else had picked up a bow here. So somebody else is already going to be draining that. And it would be hitting the break-even point fairly quickly. So, um, that would then make this bow with its 8-plus card less valuable. But this card is going to produce more food. Now, and the bow would only produce 6. The berries are going to produce 8 right now. We got one more draw because, ah, I forgot about this, the blue player more or less had to, although nobody knew it because he had fire, pick up this basket, which is going to produce a couple of food for him. Uh, it's not a bad thing, and he got the free food off of it. So overall, it was a bonus. He, he gained a food for taking the card. Um, nothing disappears because that one went, so we just get a new one is something I've never seen. Transport sled. You can own four tools. Ooh, that's nice. All right. Well, let's move on to... I already discarded rotten food. Nobody had to throw any to hunting and feeding. I'm on the hunting and feeding the clan stage of the game. And this is... Nothing has really changed here. So, I mean, for example, with Blue, he's going to be going first because he's the last player, of course. Um... There's seven or more berries there, so that's worth two. Now, that number can decrease... Oh, God. Sorry about that. That number... My camera's got problems. Um, the zoom gets stuck. Uh, that number can decrease because, well, he's getting two right now. Well, now we're down to four, eight, ten. It's not going to be a big deal in this one. And he gets his grain, of course. Now he's got to feed his people. He's only got four people. Well, he'll spend his berries for that. And we'll go through, see if anybody gets kind of hosed by the decrease in in, in, uh, in the populations as we go, or if anything else really interesting happens. So indeed, we did have a situation where somebody else's consumption affected the, another player later in the, or, or earlier in the player order, therefore later in the turn. Uh, the black player, has ah, there we go again god damn it has this bow and he grabbed a couple of the bears well now it's down to six bears and over here this guy was hoping for eight or more bears now we have to look because this is could be interesting it doesn't turn out that way he's only got one area that he's adjacent to that has bears so he gets no bonus but if he was adjacent to two other areas, the total of all three areas adjacent to bears, well, then he would be able to add two for the extra areas to the number of bears available, and he would have been able to pick an extra bear. As it is, though, he's only going to get one bear. He gets a grain for his herbs and his basket. So here's the other question. How many grapes are there? Well, there's two, four, six, eight grapes which is actually his break-even point, he gets four of them. There's a lot of grapes getting eaten. Now here, he does actually, there were actually nine grapes there because he has two grape-producing areas. So even if he had been down by one more and not been perfectly at the right number, well, he still would have picked the extra grapes. Onward into... Oh, the first and second players. And another kind of boned situation. I'm looking at Red's pieces. Well, he got his herbs and he got his two fish. No problem. Nobody else has been grabbing those. But let's go to Mammoths. Nobody's been grabbing these either, but there's only five of them, so we're close to our limit. Uh, one through five gets us one. A sixth one would get us two, so I have to look again. 
but unfortunately I'm only in one mammoth space. I've got to expand uh, to improve that. That's a good hunting thing. They're worth four points each, and I didn't get it. And to clarify, I fed uh, my white people, and I have to feed my red people now. Again, they have four food that they need. Um, throw a mammoth in. Not sure, you know, would a fish have been a better deal? I don't know. Right now, you got to kind of, uh, you've got a lot of stuff in the, uh, in the supply, so it probably doesn't matter too much what you throw in. All right, on to green. And green managed to grab a mammoth and uh, a piece of food. And now he's only got three food left after feeding his people. Now we're in the expansion phase. And again, this goes in reverse order, like everything else. You know, player order is always not what they mean. Um, so let's look at expansion opportunities. It's that kind of tough here. Nobody's got a lot, or many people don't have a lot of money. Blue, for example, only has three bucks. Because they weren't able to buy a, a good producing tool. So they didn't increase their value tremendously here. Yet their population has grown. So they're barely keeping even. Whereas people who've, you know, maybe gotten good production are going to be able to grow more and or... Uh, buy better tools in the future and increase their productivity. It's an interesting little little issue here. How do you balance your growth with what you want to buy? And that's that's really what it's all about in this game. How many spaces can you grow? Because that's where you're racing. You're racing to see how far you can expand in the end because the game ends when you hit when somebody reaches 13 and then the person with the most people on the board wins. But on the other side well, you, you don't want to spend all your money growing because you got to spend your money to make money. Anyway, we'll see how uh, the decisions pan out. So just to show a couple of the early ones, Blue really had no money. They have to, they only have two bucks. That's barely going to give them anything up there. So they only expanded one space, I think, here. Uh, cheapest they could do, basically. And black is the next player they looked and said well i could go cheap and i could have gone here for a buck could have gone to both of these for three bucks but instead expanded into another type of terrain because there's a couple of these fishing poles available so that cost me three bucks to go there well that only leaves me four bucks left some of the higher value cards are in that range i might be able to get my hands on them I don't have fire, so I want it to spend something no matter what. You don't want to hoard your money without fire because you mu you, you, you'll, uh, you'll lose a third of your money after the purchase phase if you don't buy something big. All right, keep going through them. Okay, now white went with a double expansion. They had a lot of money, and that puts them up to the six. What they did was they expanded into here and then paid the premium two bucks so they spent a total of five bucks on their expansion into this extra mammoth zone so they're kind of you know spreading out nicely now we go to red who also has a decent amount of money with two four uh sorry three six seven bucks worth of food now i can't see spending more than four bucks on a card in the future because there's enough cheaper cards there that it's unlikely a five buck card is going to be available so Certainly three bucks can be spent, maybe four, because three buck cards look like they might be all that's going to be actually available. I mean, are we going to go about that? We don't know. Okay, so three to four bucks. Now, very cheaply, I could go three bucks and expand into two areas. That gets me growth, but it doesn't give me production advantages. Now, this one does. I definitely want to go there. Um, but what else can I possibly add that'll give me a productive advantage is really the question here. Or get me towards one, right? Because putting in these spaces, those are dead ends. Yeah, I can save a buck or two bucks by playing now before, say, black gets there or something. But that's not really going to be important to me. So right now I'm one buck down. I've got six bucks left. Six bucks left, if I only spend three, I'm going to lose a buck. So I think I want to go somewhere else. But where? 
where can I expand to? And that's really the question. I can go to one of these kind of cheaply at the three buck level. Can I get to something that'll help me? Because one of the problems with these is not only do they not help my production, they increase my cost of how much I have to feed and they weaken my turn order. But I don't want to waste money either. The next cost up would put me to a five buck cost. I don't want to pay that much. So, which way do I want to go? Well, this is useless. I'll go here and I'll pay three, three bucks because those are both empty spaces. Fish goes here. And now we're on to the last player, green. So much thinking. Well, yeah. I'll come back. Green feels like he can't expand. Just kind of the position blue was in. The only places he could expand to are these one buckers that don't improve his production at all, only increase his cost. You know what? He's not going to make that f mistake. Blue made it. He doesn't want to do it. He's going to stand back because this allows him to be, uh, I think, the last player or something like that. Anyway, I, their decisions on what to call first player and what it means just infuriate me, as you no doubt know. All right. So red and white have the most people, and white has a higher valued card than any that red has. So white's going to be first, red's going to be second. Next most people, blue, yellow, and black, this line here. Who's got the most cards, or most point card? 20 points for black. Black's going to go third. Yellow's 19 is next, then blue. And finally green will take up the back of the pack. Now we refill the re resources, and remember we bury one of these and get a new resource, just to, because the refilling of the resources doesn't really tell us much, but we've got a new spear up there for mammoth killing. And let's, uh, I'll take care of the bookkeeping and then load this up without coming back.